Now in this video, I'm going to talk about buoyancy. Buoyancy is what allows you to swim in a swimming pool. It's what allows hot air balloons to fly. It allows all boats and ships to stay above water. But what is it? Well, buoyancy is actually, in some ways, a form of air pressure. Remember that air pressure is enormously strong, but generally speaking, we think it applies the same amount in all directions, so it cancels out. Well, buoyancy is a very small imbalance in the air pressure, so that some sides of an object have slightly more air pressure applied to them than others. Now, to work this out, I'd like you to consider a cube of air in this room. Let's say we've got a one cubic meter block of air. Now, one cubic meter of air weighs about a kilogram, 1.3 kilograms at sea level, a bit less up here in Canberra. If you had something else that weighed a kilogram, let's say this book, you let it go, it would fall. But this cubic meter of air, which weighs the same amount, does not fall. Now, when I ask people why it doesn't fall, they normally say something along the lines of, because the air at the bottom it gets in the way. But the air underneath the book doesn't get in the way. What is this about air that stops air falling but doesn't stop books falling, considering that the air and the book weigh the same amount? Well, if you think about it, do a free body diagram for this cubic metre of air. It's got weight, about mg, so about 12 or so newtons, pointing downwards. Because it's not accelerating downwards, there must therefore be some net upward force of the same magnitude above it. Now what are the forces acting on this cube of air? Well basically it's air pressure. There's air pressure from the air underneath it pushing up, air pressure from the air on the sides pushing in, and air pressure from above pushing down. So somehow the air pressure pushing up from underneath must be a little bit more than the air pressure pushing down from the top, and that's what keeps it floating here. So in general, whenever you have a fluid in a gravitational field, like, for example, the air in this room, there must be a pressure gradient. The pressure must be more at the bottom and go steadily up at the top, and this pressure gradient is what stops all the air from, in this room from collapsing into a puddle on the floor. It keeps it where it is. That's because every part of air in this room, or any part of any fluid, has weight. Weight's pushing it down, therefore there must be a pressure in imbalance, more pressure at the bottom than less at the top. How do we work out the buoyancy force on some object immersed in a fluid? Now here is an object immersed in a fluid, me in the air in the room. And, as we've just said, the air pressure down near the bottom is going to be a bit more than the air pressure at the top, and that's going to give a net upward force. But how do you calculate it? Well, there's a hard way and there's an easy way. The hard way would be to work out an equation for what the air pressure is at each altitude. So there might be a bit more here and a bit less there. Then, to take my body and divide up little regions all over, and for each region, work out what the air pressure is at that altitude, calculate the vector air pressure, and then sum them, integrate them over the entire surface, which would require you to write down an equation for the entire surface of me and the chair. Good luck. However, thankfully, there is a really sneaky and much easier way to do it. Now, let's replace the object in the fluid with fluid in the fluid with the same shape. So here we have exactly the same volume, only now we've filled it with fluid. Now in this case, we know that this fluid is not going to sink or rise, it's just going to sit there, assuming it's a still fluid. Therefore, there can be no net force on this rather peculiar shaped bit of fluid. Its weight downwards must balance the net pressure force upwards. So that's telling us that if we had the shape of fluid, the fluid in exactly the same shape as the object, what we call the fluid displaced by the object, the fluid that's not there because the object, in this case me and my chair, are there, we can calculate, we can calculate what its downward weight is. That has to be equal and opposite to the net force of the pressure upwards, the buoyancy force. So that's how you work out 
buoyancy. You don't work out directly. You say if you had the fluid in the exact same shape as the object, what would its weight be? And we know that must be equal and opposite to the buoyancy force on it. Very sneaky. So the buoyancy force on an object immersed in a fluid is equal and opposite to the weight of the fluid that's not there because the object has taken its place. That is to say, the weight of the fluid displaced by the object, which is weird. Let's do a worked example to see how we'd actually apply this. Let's imagine we have a spherical balloon, radius 8 meters, and it's full of hot air, which has a density of 0.9 kilograms per cubic meter, as opposed to the density outside, which is a bit more. Let's say that all the fabric of the balloon weighs about 100 kilograms, and we want to know how much it could lift. So let's say we attach a cable to it. How much weight could we carry upwards? Now, to calculate this, we have to work out the buoyancy force on the sphere and take off the weight of the sphere. Now, the buoyancy force is just going to be the weight of all the air that would have been here, the cold air that would have been there if the balloon wasn't there. So the mass is going to be the density outside. It's called that omega O times the volume. The volume of a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the buoyancy is going to be that times g, the weight equals. Now we have to work out, so that's the net upward force, but there's also going to be a downward force. There's going to be the weight of the balloon, but there's also going to be the weight of the air inside, which is less dense than the air outside, but still weighs something. So as usual for buoyancy, we've got to work out the whole shape, how much cold outside air isn't there, and then compare it to the weight of everything in there. Now the weight of everything in there is going to be 100 kilograms times g plus density inside times g times 4 thirds pi r cubed. So the net force is going to be the difference between these two. So net force equals uh, with the 4 thirds pi r cubed g can go outside. And then we're going to get rho naught minus rho inside minus 100 g. which comes out as 5,327 newtons. So I have, have to lift about 500 kilograms, which probably will do for a basket with one or two people inside it. So that's how you work it out. Look at the total volume, work out how much air, the, the, or the fluid, whatever it is, water, that's displaced would have weighed. Compare it to how much it weighs, which might include the uh, density of any hot air inside it. Difference tells you the buoyancy force.